Since the last dev blog where we were promised smaller and more frequent updates, we IO fans have been waiting for something to prove that that would be true. What we got was Gateway, a brand new map for the Isle of Rima and hopefully a step in the right direction. I definitely expected poor performance into Crash, but I only really had any issues with rubber banding towards the end of my four hour long session. Okay, so hey everybody, I am playing the new Gateway map as a galley. I finally was able to get into the horde testing thing because it was absolutely full. Q times were forever and I couldn't do anything about it, but I'm finally in. I'm playing as a galley and I'm just kind of going to play around, see what the new mechanics are and how much better this map is. And uh, we'll go from there. My first impressions of Gateway is that it's like a remix between Legacy and the Spiro map. The one thing you'll be able to notice from almost anywhere on the map are the multiple large domes. These things are massive and I mean massive. It took me a good seven minutes to run around the entirety of one of them, which in game is quite a long time. And although I looked pretty hard, I could not find a way to actually get inside of them. Other than the domes, Gateway is covered with tons of paths and bridges. If you ever get lost, you can just find one of those and they'll take you wherever you really need to go because it goes to every point of interest. Wow, I don't even, I have no words. It looks so good. Oh, that's gotta be like one of the trees for Herrera. That looks like a very climbable tree. Back up here towards where the regular road is. We got tracks and everything. Oh, shit. I was worried there. One of my biggest issues with the Sparrow Ooh. map was the lack of shallow places oh. to drink. Pretty much everywhere was guaranteed for a Dano to be hiding so that they can snatch you deep into the water. More shallow water places is what I wanted for the aisle. You know? It should be like, oh, if you know where the safe drink, you should be safe. On Gateway, however, that's actually pretty different. There are plenty of shallow areas for you to drink where they'd really have to lunge pretty far or walk right up on you in order to reach you. So if you know where these shallow places are, you should be safe from incoming Danos. The flip side of that is that if you are a baby Dano trying to grow, there are plenty of smaller streams for you to be safe in from other predators until you get large enough to move to the larger rivers. Wallowing is my favorite mechanic that they introduced in Evriba and it's making a big comeback in Gateway. While you still can't wallow on the banks of rivers, there are way more mud pits in Gateway than there ever was on Spiro, and this means that you should be making use of the clotting abilities so you can stop bleeding when you're in a fight. The largest mud pit can actually be found at the swamp where it covers like a good third of the area. If you are familiar with the V2 map of Legacy, then the swamp will probably give you the same kind of vibes, at least when you're there at night. This looks like the first iteration of the Spiro map, which to be honest, I liked that better than kind of what we have now. At least I think it was easier to navigate. You know, you had that designated swampy area, but the swamp was like right in the middle. I feel like the swamp is where the best interactions happen. Every time I've played the aisle, because you'd find everybody there. It was very spooky. People in the water, people hiding in the bush near the water. It's such a nice area that it even got a little surprise. <gasps> was that a rainbow? Oh my God. I think that's the first rainbow I've seen in the aisle ever. I don't know if they had rainbows before at any point because I've never seen one, but that's beautiful. I love it. There is this section of raised trees that creates confusing little tunnels in the dirt that you can loop people around. It constantly has fog, so it also has a spooky vibe no matter what weather you're in. Very atmospheric. I like the way this looked like. Just walking through, it's kind of a, that desolate, spooky vibe. Could you imagine if it was nighttime? After traveling the map, I eventually made my way to the beach where I kind of just followed the coast and started foraging with Galley but I was hoping for some kind of hint of the docks, but I could not find it even though I followed the beach all the way around. So we may not be here at least yet on this map. You got some like semi shallow water puddles, which is different. They didn't do that before. Maybe that means the water will rise a little bit here. Like they've got some tides going on. That would be really interesting to see like uh, weather changes, you know, that drastic. Cause of course we already have the rain as you can see now. The most surprising thing for me was that there was absolutely no hint of any nesting grounds on this map which I makes me wonder if they're going to maybe get rid of nesting grounds since people barely use them on Spiro or what they plan to do with that. Ooh, the compies. They're not registering that I killed the turtle all the way over there to go and eat it. So they're just standing here. Yeah. <gasps> it says I can grab this. Can I eat it? 
Oh my gosh, I'm holding him in my little claws. Bro, I don't know if this is revolutionary or not, but it looks so good and I love it. My favorite part of the map by far is definitely this access tunnel. It has a whole lot of human stuff in it, lots of lights and pipes and doors. I couldn't get inside anything, but I definitely wanted to walk through and show you guys so you could see what I see and maybe feel what I feel. <laughs> oh. Oh, the tunnel, the tunnel inside the sanctuary. Oh my God, can, can we see? No, we can't see it. Okay, but wow, we've got cans and stuff outside, roadblocks. All right, let's go inside. It's piping and everything. Jeez, we're actually pretty big. Ooh, can I go in here? No, all right. Oh God, the light's turned on. That's terrifying. Does that mean they know I'm here? I don't know, I don't know. I'm worried. The vents, these vents. This is really cool though. Oh, can I see a little bit? You guys can get a little bit of the atmosphere. This is crazy though. I love seeing this, to be honest. Like I know a lot of people would love for the Isle to be, you know, a strictly dinosaur game. And there's quite a few people who want a game that's just dinosaurs doing dinosaur stuff. But it's also really cool to see dinosaurs and humans together. Just cause even though we're all animals, we're just so vastly different. The gateway map isn't the only new thing to come out of this update. We got changes to the diet system as well as the all new migration system. When you spawn in for the first time and you take a moment to sniff around, you're going to see these two palm tree looking icons in your scent. Now, while I did try to follow them at first, they didn't seem to be getting any closer to me. So I eventually gave up because I didn't really even know what they were. But the more I kept looking around, the more I realized I couldn't find any of my diet food. And then I checked on my character selection screen and the only thing I had was sanctuary mushrooms. At the time I had no idea what sanctuary was and I just assumed it was the big dome buildings. But as I played more and more, I decided to actually follow the icons until they got big enough. And once I reached it, I found a spot that you're really going to want to see. Okay, it looks like I'm actually at the... What are these arrows? What does this mean? Does this mean I can eat anything? These three little arrow symbols. Oh, what's that? A beehive? Can I eat that? Are these the mushrooms? Sanctuary is basically a juvie paradise. You pretty much have to go there if you want to get diet food now. You can't just eat whatever you want because your diet is going to be restricted to the food that is available at the sanctuary. You will always be able to smell sanctuary no matter where you are in the map and no matter if you're a herbivore or a carnivore. Other than these sanctuary mushrooms, there are also beehives in the sanctuary, which while I played, I couldn't figure out which dino was supposed to eat them or how you were supposed to interact with them. But there is a bug going around where the bees will be invisible and attack you. So just be aware of that. I don't know if they fixed it yet, but they can kill you. After getting your diet food, I suggest you leave immediately unless you want to run into a bunch of other juvies or possible adults who come to kind of stalk you while you're there. Once you're out of juvie phase, your diet list will actually expand and you'll get a bit more options. You'll also start seeing these kind of footprint arrow icons in your scent, which is actually the migration system. If you don't follow the footprint icon, then you'll find it really hard to find your diet food. And the more you follow it, the more of your food will be available. Oh, suddenly I have a lot of preferred food. Papaya, Brazil nuts, radish root, trillium, fireweed, fiddleheed, radish flower, jackfruit, marigold, banana, crab, and mountain ash. That's a lot. Ultimately, when I followed the migration system, it didn't really mean anything. Once I got there, I just kind of reached a point of interest. And I guess it's one way to kind of find other people of the same species. But other than that, I didn't get any buff or any surprise for actually following the system other than more diet food. The only thing I dislike about Gateway so far is that the stamina of all the dinosaurs is atrocious. It takes me 10 minutes to regain stam on every dino that I tried so far. And that just makes for a miserable time. Honestly, it makes it pretty easy for us to hide now that we sit this way. I was making fun of it earlier, but <laughs> as far as combat goes, while I was walking around and foraging, I made the mistake of trying to befriend a Paki who immediately showed me why they should never be trusted. Oh God, Paki. <laughs> ah, of course. Wow. Thanks. Thanks for that. Wow. He's swimming across. That'd be annoying body fractured negative 3.7 percent we actually see percentages for that blood regen decreased health logged health regen health decay stamina decrease and it's showing all the percentages 
poor diet so now i can eat less than my like legs broke or something i don't know why the everything keeps changing because the list is a lot smaller now jesus broken leg lasts forever and it's still getting worse instead of getting better even with me sitting matter of fact my broken leg lasted so long that i just started getting up and doing other things anyway because it was taking forever to heal at one point I tried to cross a river, but as I was swimming, I didn't notice there was a Carno standing over there in the grass until I got really close to shore. Once I came out, he definitely attacked me because hey, I'm a Gallia, he's a Cardo, and I panicked. I got hit and I jumped right back into the water where I swam back across. Swimming takes so much stamina, so I ended up just sitting on the little island close to the shore. In retrospect, I should have hid. Cause that allowed time for a Serato to come and now I'm sandwiched between a Serato and a Carno. I easily could have outran the Serato but I was like let me take my chances with the Carno again for some reason and swam back across where I ended up having no stamina and the Carno was able to easily finish me off. I'm like ah that's so stupid it took me so long to get to adult trying to figure out what to do. The cool thing is you can see the Serato run across the bridge here and he goes and kills the Carno fighting for my body, which is awesome. So I don't feel too bad about that death there. Get him. Yes. Yes. Avenge me. Murder him. Definitely scared him away from my corpse. The last thing I want to talk about is the AI. There are now these little tiny flying pterosaurs that spawn when you kill something and there's a body present. They will immediately attack you, which is just really annoying. I, mean, I don't think it's really necessary, but they're there. The devs had teased them getting animations back in the day, but now they just kind of fly around, which makes them a bit hard to hit and they could absolutely kill you if they wanted to. I ran into a bug with these pterosaurs where after I had a fight with them, if they dealt any damage to me, my skin would change. It became this blotchy sort of red sort of damage looked. And no matter if I healed all the way or what I did, my skin stayed like that for the rest of the time that I played. There is tons of Tenno AI now, which is kind of surprising. There were so many that I actually got a bit confused and thought they were players when they were moving around. But after you watch their movements for a bit, you can see that they're clearly AI. If you sniff while around them, you'll see that they have this little red scent marker, which is very interesting and a good way of kind of printing them out. I got confused and thought they were just bleeding, but it just identifies the AI. Tenos will buck when you pounce them, but they mostly just run away otherwise. As an Omniraptor, it took me a good 20 minutes to kill this one Tenno and it was very annoying because I kept running out of Stam, but they would turn around once they realized I wasn't running after them anymore and come right back to me. So that's the only way I was really able to make this kill. And that's about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's been a while since I've made the Isle video, but it was mainly because of performance issues. If the game keeps going the way it is, I'll definitely be pumping out a couple more of these. So definitely stay tuned. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.